This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and the new 2020 MacBook Air is here. And I'm excited about this release for a couple of reasons. And the most important reason is that Apple is finally getting the starting price of the MacBook Air down to $999. They're also doubling the storage, which is great. And they're also adding a lot of other improvements to this MacBook Air, which should make it pretty popular and Probably the most popular change they've made is they are getting rid of the butterfly keyboard and adding in their magic keyboard, the same one that they added to the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So for this video, let's unbox the MacBook Air, let's run some benchmarks, and let's look at some of the other improvements that Apple has added with this revision. Okay, and here we have it, the 2020 MacBook Air. As you can probably tell, this box looks pretty much identical to the 2018 and 2019 version of the Retina MacBook Air. So let's go ahead and open this up. You can see that we are greeted with the 2020 MacBook Air. I got it in the silver color. You can also get it available in space gray or gold. This is the base model configuration. So $999 for a Core i3 dual core processor. But let's take the MacBook Air and just put it to the side just for now so we can see what else comes in the box. Of course, you get a standard USB-C to USB-C cable. This is how you would charge the 2020 MacBook Air. And if we put this over to the side, you can also see that, of course, we get our famous Apple documentation that's going to come with some form of Apple sticker. You can see they are color matching. So this is silver. If you got the gold, it would be gold. If you got space gray, it would be space gray. I don't think we need to go through all the documentation. It's pretty boring. And then of course we have our charging power brick over here. And I believe this is going to be a 30 watt USB-C power adapter. So let's go ahead and peel the plastic off. Nice satisfying sound. So although this MacBook Air looks pretty much the same as the 2018 and 2019 models, there are two very, very slight changes. The first is that it actually weighs a little bit heavier, 0.05 pounds heavier, not really that much. The old MacBook Air from 2018 and 2019 weighed 2.75 pounds. This one weighs 2.8 pounds. It's also apparently ever so slightly thicker on the most thickest part. The thinnest part is still the same, but the thicker part is very slightly thicker. Now again, those outward changes are incredibly minor. The real big change for this model is when you open it up. We are greeted with the brand new Magic Keyboard. Okay, so I finished setting up the MacBook Air and I have been testing it out all day. So the first thing that most people are probably going to ask about is the new keyboard. This is probably the biggest new addition to the 2020 MacBook Air. It is the brand new Magic Keyboard, which uses the old scissor switch mechanism as opposed to the controversial butterfly design found on the previous two versions of the MacBook Air. Overall, the keyboard feels good to type on and the increased one millimeter of travel should make most people happy. I've been using this keyboard a lot because this is the same one that's found on my main laptop, the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And this one feels identical to that model. The only real difference between those two models is that this keyboard actually uses a physical function key row as opposed to the touch bar found on the MacBook Pro models. Okay, so a new MacBook Air, $999, 256 gigabytes of storage, and they fixed the keyboard. That's all I have to talk about, right? No, there are benchmarks to run because this is also using a new processor. Now, like I mentioned before, this is the base model. So it's using a Core i3 processor with the clock speed set at 1.1 gigahertz. That sounds pretty low, but this can also turbo boost all the way up to 3.2 gigahertz. So let's see how this new i3 processor performs by running a few benchmarks. But before we look at those benchmarks, let me tell you about our sponsor for this video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a forward thinking privacy protection tool which guarantees instant online safety and no frills usage experience. When it's on, Surfshark encrypts all the data sent via the internet so that no one could see your passwords, private messages, steal photos, videos, or other sensitive data. 
To put it simply, Surfshark protects its users in the open waters of today's internet. Not only does Surfshark protect your privacy, but it also allows you to search for better pricing by avoiding price discrimination for flight tickets, hotel sites, and apartment bookings. It encrypts information sent between your devices and blocks ads, malware, trackers, and prevents phishing. It's also great for traveling to other countries so you can connect to Wi-Fi without worrying about sharing your data with strangers and great for getting past geo-restricted content blockers and internet censorship so you can still access the websites you love even when traveling abroad. Surfshark also offers unlimited simultaneous connections on one account and advanced security protocols. And Surfshark is simple to use with a great UI, one button connection, and it will not collect data logs on your browsing history. Surfshark is also multi-platform, so it's available on iOS, Android, macOS, and Windows. Best of all, Surfshark is offering viewers of Greg's Gadgets an 83% discount and one month extra free. That's one of the best prices in the industry, and all you have to do is enter the promo code Greg's Gadgets when you sign up by clicking the link in the description. It's that easy. So make sure you protect and secure your sensitive data with Surfshark, and thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. So for the first test, I ran everyone's favorite CPU benchmark, Geekbench, and we ended up getting a single core score of 856 and a multi-core score of 1921. At first glance, that score compares very favorably to the last model, which got a single core score of 758 and a multi-core score of 1531. Okay, so a better CPU in the entry-level model so far, right? Well, it actually wasn't that simple, so I actually loaded up another benchmark to actually test how much heat this MacBook Air was putting off, and I got some different results. So, like I usually do in my videos, the next benchmark I opened up was Cinebench in combination with the Intel Power Gadget to see how fast the CPU was working and also check the internal temperature of the MacBook Air to see if we are getting any thermal throttling. The good news is, as I ran this test, there was no thermal throttling. Remember, the base clock speed for this MacBook Air is 1.1 GHz. Even though it can turbo boost up to 3.2 GHz, that doesn't always mean it's going to meet the 3.2 GHz clock speed. So it did hover around the 2 GHz to 2.5 GHz clock speed during this Cinebench benchmark. The bad news is, when running this intensive benchmark, the MacBook Air got really hot on the inside. We're looking at internal temperatures of around 99 to 100 degrees Celsius. The other bad news is that the final score on this benchmark was 464. Now I say it's bad news because I looked at my video from last year on the 2019 MacBook Air and we got a higher score of 567. Now, I still have to do more testing before I can draw a definitive conclusion on this entry-level model, but if I had to make an educated guess, I would say that this MacBook Air is faster for short bursts of intensive work. That's why the CPU score on Geekbench was higher than the older model. But when I was doing a task that takes a long time on this MacBook Air, Cinebench R20 is a 3D modeling benchmark, because it took so long and because the MacBook Air got hot, it wasn't able to turbo boost up to the higher clock speeds of around 3.2 gigahertz, whereas the MacBook Air from 2019 had a higher base clock speed of 1.6 gigahertz. So I'm guessing that's what ultimately got the lower score uh, in this benchmark. Obviously, I'm going to have to test this MacBook Air beyond the benchmarks to see how well it does in real world performance, but that's for another video. So moving away from the CPU test, the next thing I wanted to test was the read and write speeds on this model. Using the Blackmagic disk speed test, I was able to get a write score just under 1000 megabytes with a read score hovering around 1400 megabytes. The good news here is that this is actually faster than the 2019 model I reviewed, which got a write speed of around 677 and a read speed of around 1,259. But the benchmarking doesn't stop there because one of Apple's other claims with this 2020 MacBook Air was that they increased the graphics power, now moving over to the Iris Plus graphics rather than the Intel UHD 617. Apple claims that this internal graphics processor will get up to 80% 
faster graphics results. To test this, I loaded up the Heaven benchmark and ran a benchmark on medium settings. Overall, as the benchmark finished, you can see that we got an overall score of 380 with a average FPS of 15.1, a minimum FPS of 6.3, and a max FPS of 32.2. And yeah, those don't sound too good. Actually, I was pretty disappointed in these results, especially with Apple saying that we would see graphics up to 80% faster. Now, granted, they say up to 80% faster, not exactly 80% faster, but when I ran the same test on the 2019 MacBook Air, you can see that the performance gains were very minimal. So yeah, we're not even seeing a single digit increase on the average FPS running this benchmark. Again, really, really, really disappointed with these initial results. Now that's all I have for the benchmarks. There were some other changes to the MacBook Air, including a new speaker, which apparently is going to deliver double the bass. I was able to notice the difference on this MacBook Air. However, it really does pale in comparison to the new speakers on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. I still wanna do some more testing with those speakers on the MacBook Air and compare them directly against the 16 inch MacBook Pro just to make sure. Uh, there was also a new microphone on the MacBook Air, but I have not tested that out yet. I'm going to save that for a future review of the MacBook Air, which should be coming towards the end of this week. But overall, I said I would give my first impressions by the end of this video. Again, I want to warn people, this isn't the full review. If you really want to know my true opinion, I'm going to need more time to spend with the MacBook Air, and I'm going to have to run a lot more tests and use it for real-world applications, not just running benchmarks. But my initial impressions of the MacBook Air so far are mixed. I am happy with the price drop, $999. Very happy it's starting at that price point again. Very happy that they're giving you double the storage now with the base model. I can finally recommend the entry level model for a lot more people now. The things I am disappointed with is particularly that Cinebench benchmark. I was a little concerned with how hot the MacBook Air was getting, not necessarily for this Core i3 model. I think it's fine for what most people are going to use it for. But I also ordered the Core i7 model, which is coming uh, later sometime in April. I am very concerned that that processor isn't going to perform much better. It's a quad core i7. So I really hope when I get that model, the MacBook Air is able to cool it efficiently enough that it gives us much better results than we're seeing with this entry level model. Having said that, even though I am disappointed with some of those power claims, I am overall happy that this is a laptop that now starts at, again, $999, a $100 price drop. It also has double the storage of last year's model and it replaces the butterfly keyboard with the new Magic Keyboard, and that should make a lot of people happy. So if you don't need that much power and you're looking at getting an Apple laptop and you want something that's going to be inexpensive, I don't think I would have a problem recommending this model as it stands. Again, wait for the full review to see some more tests here, but this is the MacBook Air a lot of people have been waiting for. All right, everyone, hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you leave me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, including that future full review of the MacBook Air, make sure you're subscribed. Also, be sure to let me know what you think of the 2020 MacBook Air in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out our sponsor for this video, Surfshark VPN. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.